Huh? Yeah, we're going to we're going to delete a lot of stuff and kind of start over. So, what I did yesterday was just to show you how to draw on a view um, and we made our own little chart and we drew some lines in the context and showed you how difficult that really is to do. So, uh, now we're going to use a library to do this instead and it's a popular library on the Android side and somebody ported it to the Swift side so that iOS can use it. So the library is called come on, uh, uh, iOS charts and if we go to no that's not it Go to ah, come on, copy. This is a, one of the tutorials. If you go to github.com slash Daniel Gindy slash iOS dash charts. This is a port of this MP Android chart library that we're going to use on the Android side. But this is, uh, this is some nice library that we, that we can create all these nice charts with. Look at that. And now you see how hard it is to draw a line. You can imagine how hard it is to draw your own charts like these. A lot of work. Yeah, there's a lot of work behind that. So. This is, somebody already put all that work into it, and they're they're using it. They're allowing you to use it for for free. Um, so we're going to use that, <coughs> and we. So what we have to do is see their their documentation is is uh, not real good because they're relying on the Android chart documentation, which is slightly different. So what we first have to do is download the library and they don't have a nice link on here um, that I could find. Ah, oh, here it is. Okay, so at the very top, uh, it's a, or actually this is in the middle, it says questions and issues. There's a, a release section, and we want to download uh, the latest graphic code. So, oh, this is, let's see, this is new eight hours ago. That's new from when I just did it. <laughs> Let's see. So let's download the source code. Zip. And open that. And that gives us a folder with some demos. And this is basically his entire get repo uh, but what we want is this folder called charts so we're going to grab this charts folder and we're going to put it inside of our uh, Xcode project directory not in the Xcode project but in the directory so if we right click on on our project and say show in finder that gives us the folder where our project is and we're going to put this charts folder inside of that. So we're not adding it to the project. We're just at copying the whole folder into the into our project. All right, and it's got inside of it. It has some tests, some classes, some, and its own Xcode project. 
Alright, you with me so far? Download it all. Alright, so now with the with your Xcode project open and this charts folder open, you can grab the charts.xcode project. And we're going to drag that into our project over here. All right, so now we have a whole nother Xcode project inside of our Xcode project. Where did you put that in the Xcode? At which level? The, uh, oh, just at the top level inside, the, inside your main folder. Okay. So with the, with the other Swift files. Okay, everybody got their Xcode project installed there. Yeah. So we first drug the charts folder from the zip file into our main project. And then from inside the charts folder, we grabbed the Xcode project and put it into our um, code there. Sorry? from here into there. All right, so now what we have to do is we have to tell our project that we're using this library from inside of this Xcode project. So there are classes that deal with all kinds of stuff that you can imagine, you can look at all these files and see how much work it is uh, to draw a graph. You know, there's a lot of graphics in here that he has to deal with. All right, so we won't really have to look at that at all. Uh, the next thing we have to tell our project that we're using that library, if you click on the main project at the top, not the Xcode project, but the main, my, called my, my BMI chart calc lecture, uh, and we look at the general tab, and we scroll down to where it says embedded binaries. We're going to hit this little plus sign. We're going to add the, the, the framework from the charts project. So if we look down here in the charts X code, we want to include the charts framework, uh, iOS uh, framework instead of the T, we don't want the TV iOS. So we want this charts framework iOS from inside the charts Xcode project, not from inside of here. All right. So we say add, and now we're using, um, that library and let's build the project just to make sure it finds that now so uh, under product we can say build for running instead of actually running it and if your build succeeded then we're, we're good we should be okay <laughs> all right so now we're going to use that view that we used yesterday instead of deleting it um, or we could just start over again. It doesn't matter too much. Um, which do you think would be easier? Start over. start over. Okay, so let's delete this uh, view from our main storyboard. And you can select it and hit the delete key on the keyboard. And that deletes all of the, uh, the segue and everything leading from our weight log file. And then let's delete our, actually I'm going to leave it there because I want it for future use, but um, you don't need this chart view controller anymore. We're going to, uh, uh, I'm going to rename it actually something else, uh, manual, because <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to lose that code. All right, so now we need to have our main storyboard open. We're going to drag a new view controller on the screen. So now we have a new view controller. Uh, make this look good. We're going to 
add a new <coughs> we're going to add a new uh, file to control this view so we need to right click new file Cocoa Touch iOS source class we're going to call it uh, chart view Uh, and it's going to be a subclass of the UI view controller in the language Swift. Next, save it in our project. And so now we have a chart view uh, that it inherits from the UI chart controller here. Actually, I probably should have called that chart view controller, but just to make it so we know that it's a controller. So let me let me do that. I'm going to delete the file. Uh, it seems to and move it to trash. It seems to sometimes add that controller at the end of it, but it. It's not consistent, it seems like. Yeah, move to trash. So I'm going to call it uh, chart view controller. Same language Swift, save it in the same place. All right, so I have a chart view controller. I have to uh, set the class of the view. So if we look at our main storyboard again, um, and we click on the view itself, uh, notice that when I click on the header, the little window title bar here, it looks different over here. I'm actually looking at uh, the entire image as opposed to the view that's being displayed inside of here. So what I actually have to have is clicking the top uh, window bar first and we're going to use the chart view controller to link the code that we just created to that little view that we have here. Alright, so now, now I have an error. Chart view controller. So because I, my manual uh, file is still here. I'm going to have to call this manual. And that should get rid of that. All right, so this entire view is controlled by this code. And the next thing we have to do is create a button from our weight log view so that we can open it. So I already had a button from before. I'm going to right click and connect these two with a show segue. And we'll give it an ID. If you can get it to show up. Of uh, switch to calc to, sorry. Uh, chart so now we have a segue going across to it our view chart code over here we already have the uh, switch to chart code that's hooked up to our button we did that yesterday so if you haven't done that you'll need to add the action that uses the same uh, ID that we just created for our segue Yeah, that should be that shouldn't have been deleted from your stuff. But <clears throat> if you don't have it, you'll have to add that back in. All right, so now we have our chart view controller. It can, it's controlled by this, and the next thing we have to do is uh, sorry. Am I? Huh? 
Oh, no, no, it's not. That's interesting. Uh, so, that's a problem. Sharpie controller. Why would it show that? We want this one. Good, good catch. <laughs> I probably should have deleted that. That's just going to cause problems. I can uh, I can remove it and leave it in my folder. So let's let's uh, delete it and only remove the reference, and that should help clear up some of these problems here. So now my my code is still on the disk. It's just not in my project. All right, anybody with me so far? I think so. So you probably had the same problem I did. So let's let's run it and just see that we can switch to this new view. through our buttons and we view the chart and there's our chart so we're at least that far <clears throat> so inside of so remember I said if you click on the window bar you get one different class that controls that if I click on the view itself I get a different class and so for the inside view here I need to have that be the bar chart uh, view or chart view class now these came because you'll, you'll see all kinds of scatter chart view these are all here because we included that library so what we're doing is we're setting the class for this entire visible view part to this bar chart view. And then we can manipulate that inside of our view controller here. So we need an outlet from the view itself. So we draw a uh, right click and draw a line to create an outlet and we'll call it uh, the bar, no, we'll call it bar chart view with a lowercase b. and that's connected to the entire view. <coughs> Why doesn't it like that? Oh, okay, so it's undeclared type. We have to also import that library. So we say import charts. And that should fix that. All right, everybody with me still? rid of some of this screen space here okay so now if we run this now we should get a string on the screen that says no chart data so we go we have to click all the way through and it says no chart data available so now we know that we have the class set up right for the view and if we had data and we set the data correctly it would draw a chart here okay so make sure you have this no chart data available I you click and drag from here Just the empty, from empty space. yeah from the empty space yeah Yeah, it's an outlet, and I call it a little little BR chart view. All right, so now what we can do is uh, let's let's create 
let's do something to make sure it's using our view correctly. And we can use that bar chart view outlet, that, that object, and we can say, um, for the no data text, <laughs> we can change that text instead and say, you must supply some weight data for the bar chart. All right, if I run it again, I get <coughs> my custom string instead of theirs. So I've overridden what the text is showing. So mine says you must supply some weight data for the bar chart. Then they have another one, Just this is just to show that everything's working. I can say the no data text description, which is basically just a second line for this. And I can say, set that to log some data in the weight logger, something like that. So this is basically just a second line. So I can run that. <coughs> and it says log some data in the weight logger. So I've got basically two lines of data that I could print. So I would use that if, for instance, I couldn't find my logging file. I might check for existence of that file. That means that they never logged anything yet. So I could use that to display that. That makes sense? All right, so now we need some data. So we're going to create some arrays of data first just to show that it's working. And then tomorrow we'll try to read that data from the log and graph the log data instead. So let's create a, what the heck? Uh, an array called months, which is an array of strings with the January, February, March, um, April, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. I'm going to use three letter abbreviations oct and nov and dec. Okay, so we have an array of strings which is nice in Swift. You couldn't do that in Objective-C. And we need some points, some data points. So I'm gonna call them uh, my weight points that match each of these months. So I need an array and we'll make it an array of floats. So in uh, January, I weighed 160 pounds and, <coughs> excuse me, Actually, it's right after Christmas, so wait, 190, and then 188, and 187, and whatever you want to put in here, 185, January, February, March, April, May, went down to 180, June, July, August, because I'm exercising outside, right? It's really good. September, really dropped. Uh, October, I'm going to start putting weight on because I'm a, a bear hibernating in the winter. October, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. November, it's going to go up because it's Thanksgiving. And then December, he tops out with all the cookies. All right, so I've got two arrays of data, and each of these match. So I've got one data point for each of my columns. These are going to be the x-axis data points, and these are going to be the y-axis, or the, the chart length, so each bar chart length. So then I want to, we'll, we'll write a function called uh, setChart, 
and we'll pass it in the months and the values and then we'll write that method. Everybody with me? So I create a new funk called set chart with the months um, Sorry, we'll call this uh, the, this is confusing. I'm going to say the X axis labels as my variable, and it's an array of string, strings. And then the values for this is going to be an array of uh, doubles. And we don't need it to return anything. And it doesn't like it. Why? Well, expected a separator. Because I didn't close my closing parentheses. All right, so there's my array. I guess Swift kind of likes it like that. It doesn't matter. And since this is the method that we're going to call, I could take some of this I could take this specific data here and move it into that method so I'm going to take my no text data out and my no text description and move it inside of my method just to show that my method is being called and let's run it again to make sure that everything's going smoothly because I like to run things a little at a time so I still get the same thing. It's using my custom strings in my in my code here. Actually, we could just go to uh, a single view. Uh, So there's my there's my method. Any questions on that so far? I like to make these look better, so we'll have four data points on the line. Okay, any questions on that so far? Sorry? Oh, okay. <laughs> Resume. Now we have to put this data in a format that this library likes it. So they need a, an array, I'm going to call it data entries, of bar chart data entry. Bar chart data. Lost my entry. So I'm going to have an array of these objects. All right, and that defines it, and I'm going to say I want a blank one to start with. So I've got an array of bar chart data entries. So now we have to walk through the data that came into my method. I'm going to walk through these um, my months, and so we do that with a, a for loop for i in my x-axis labels. Oops, sorry. Um, we have to say the range zero to less than. That gives us all of those labels, <coughs> like a like a range. And which is strange, strange 
syntax again. Uh, then we're going to create a new data entry object that is a bar chart data entry calling their initializer, their constructor, and we pass it a value which is my uh, values that are passed in. I want to get the first one and then set this x index to be just i. So what we're doing is we're setting this bar chart data entry. Each entry has an index number, which I don't know why they couldn't use the index of the array, but that's how it works. And then the uh, the value that comes in. So these are going. This is creating an array of two pieces of information, basically, an array of bar chart data entries. So then we have to add that to our array of those. So we say data entries dot append, and we pass it our data entries. So kind of like what you did in your animals, you create a new animal, you add it to your array. That's what we did there. Now, what doesn't it like here? So this should be singular. So we're taking this data and we're adding it to this data entries array. <clears throat> and I could have done that on one line, right? I could have taken this and put it inside of here. Same thing, just to show you two different ways to do that. All right, so we're creating a new element from the incoming x-axis labels, and it had to have an index as well as a value for that to, to graph. All right, so that's the x-axis. Then we have to say, we're going to create a chart data set, and it's a bar chart data set object where we're going to have the y values are going to be our uh, data and this seems backwards to me data entries and the label is going to be weight so that's my weight and then I need another chart data object that's bar chart data where my x vowels is <coughs> my data points not my data points my um, x axis labels and my data sets are this chart data set that I just created chart data set so if that isn't confusing I don't know what is so why doesn't it like that Set singular. I did that. I did that before too. All right. So this, all of this, all that did was get the data from our two arrays into the structures that this library likes to have them. Then what we do is for that bar chart uh, object that we created an outlet for, we have to set that data. So we say bar chart data dot data equals chart data. Why? Oh, this is a lowercase v. All right, so for our outlet, what's wrong with that? Bar chart data, bar, no, bar chart view. Telesense screws you up sometimes. Bar chart view dot data. We're setting the data object 
for this view to all of this stuff that we created as various structure points and arrays of structures so that they could draw out the data. All right, not too bad, a little bit painful. So let's run it. <coughs> and we should see a nice little bar chart. Wouldn't that be cool if we actually saw it? Yeah, look at that. So 200 up here was my biggest value. So it scales the chart from zero to 200 based on the data that I have. And it's got all kinds of, I can click on different values. I can double click, which zooms in. Notice how it's zooming in. I can scroll around. <coughs> I can use a, a double pinching method on phones. You guys are familiar with pinching for in and out. To do that on a uh, on the simulator, you hold the uh, it's going to be the command key or the alt key on your Windows keyboard. And you can you get two fingers when you see that. See, I've got two fingers on the screen, and I can control one and, and drag them together. That pinches in, or I can drag them out and it pinches out. So it's a uh, command and click. All right, isn't that cool? Now, for some reason, it's not getting me smaller. There we go. It's a little bit hard to get small. There we go. Isn't that neat? All of that, you can you imagine the graphics commands you'd have to write to get that little bar chart? Pages and pages of code. Beautiful. Now, one thing that's nice before we move on is if I go back to my my um, <coughs> my storyboard here, and I click on the view, the main view here, and instead of using bar chart view. If I use, um, I think it was called, horizontal bar chart view, there we go. If I click on horizontal bar chart view, those are very close together, so the data points are the same. If I just change that one thing in the properties and rerun it, my little guy should be, after it builds, come on. And go over to our log. I have a horizontal chart. Could you scroll down in your code? It's all you care about is my code. <laughs> you, missed this, you missed this great little thing here. Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, go ahead. So that's it. All right, any questions on that? Isn't that fun? Pretty simple once you get it right. It took me a little while to get this right, but it works. And in the wiki, for their project, you can look at um, the Android's version, which is what we're going to use. It has all kinds of stuff about setting the data and colors and formatting and changing to a pie chart and all kinds of different stuff that you can have in there. So, all right, any questions on that? Stop.